Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this video, I wanna talk about 10 tips that you should be doing in almost every single After Effects project you work in. And before we begin, be sure to smash that like button because it helps out these videos tremendously and we give these tips out to more people. And each of these tips can be used all together to form a really cool and unique style for motion graphics. So we're gonna jump in and let's get started on our top 10 tips that you should use for every After Effects project. So we're gonna start off with an obvious thing that you should do on every single After Effects project and that's turn on motion blur because there's a big difference between this smooth animation and turning on motion blur for layers that have animation. And as we look at this with motion blur, you know, the motion blur gives it a natural movement to, you know, our animation compared to something that has no motion blur. So the second thing we're gonna talk about and something that you need to understand is the difference between frame rates. So this is an animation at 23 frames per second. If I come here to composition settings, you'll see we have a frame rate of 23.976. Now you get a very natural, you know, animation, very similar to, uh, you know, a film or you know, a movie. But we come here and change the frame rate to 60 frames per second. You're gonna get a completely different style of animation. And now with the 60 frames per second look here, there's a big difference between the two frame rates. So understanding what they're gonna do to your overall work is very important before moving into a project. Just keep in mind that 23 frames per second is gonna be a little bit more natural, and, and 60 is just gonna be a lot more smooth. All right, so next up, we need to talk about background. So sometimes you're gonna have just a solid background here. As you see, we just have blue in this scene. Uh, but, you know, maybe it's not a bad idea to take a look at how to enhance this a little bit further. So we, you can create a gradient really quick by going to Effect, Stylize, and grabbing CC Vignette. And that will darken around the edges really quick. And this is a quick way just to add a variation in your background that's very subtle, but really does make a big difference. Now you can be a little bit more traditional and use something like a four color gradient uh, where you can actually control the streak of the gradient a lot more easy, or you can just use a gradient ramp uh, and direct where you want that you know middle point or the light to be. And it makes a huge difference in your work. So consider using you know some form of gradient, whether that's with a vignette, if you wanna save some time, controlling you know where you want the brightest part of the image to be or if you create something unique with a four color gradient all right so next up we have to talk about using great font so in this one title here we have the same exact typeface which is lado lado i never know how to pronounce these but we have different styles of them so the typeface is lado and the font is going to be light which you have here bold which is going to be the bottom part and also black which is the middle part and by using good fonts you can put together a really cool title so here are some fonts i would consider using in your work that you can download for free and here are the fonts that i would start using to producing really cool title work in any software that you use one of the things that i use on every single project that i think you should consider using as well is noise so if we scroll in right here you'll see that we have uh, some noise applied to here to an adjustment layer. So you go to effect noise and grain and you add noise to an adjustment layer and we turn this off real quick. You'll see how you know clean and smooth this is, but by adding noise, it just adds nice fine details to some of the areas of your image. And I have to set that 12% and uncheck use color noise. And what noise does is it makes your overall composition not static. So without noise, everything here would just be still, but by adding noise, it adds that you know, gritty movement to the overall composition. So consider using noise. So consider using noise with your work, especially if you're integrating this with say live action footage, because footage will have some form of noise uh, or grain if it's, you know, film, but you know, adding into motion graphics gives it a really cool look. So as everyone knows, creating motion graphics takes a tremendous amount of time. We talk about hours. That's why we've created a handful of After Effects templates along with our extension right here for After Effects that I'm gonna give a huge shout out on. So this is our extension that holds all the templates that we have and you can preview a template before you apply it. So this is specifically our Motion Graphics Professionals pack. We currently have 10 packs available on our website, but how these packs and extension work is aimed to help you save time and produce awesome work. So you can preview a template before you apply it and when you find the right template, you click on apply and it applies a full animated template to say your After Effects project. You can go into the template and quickly change out your title and with a few clicks of a button, you can change the color of your templates very easily with our controls. And back in your main composition, everything will update. And with these packs, you have a handful of categories that you can use. So we can come here and maybe add some accent graphics here. So we have this category here called motion graphic shapes. 
click on apply and literally with just a few clicks in under minutes worth of time we're able to put together a really cool composition with just two templates right here from one of our packs and by picking multiple of our packs you can quickly switch over to other packs that we have available so if you're looking to save time and produce awesome work you can take a look at any of the packs we have off our website if you do pick up anything you will be supporting our channel so thank you very much and you can try our free pack uh, which i'll link in the description below and you'll get like 40 free templates with the extension so since we just talked about great fonts, let's talk about great color palette for your motion graphics. We'll go through a few examples here real quick, but you should always be thinking about how you can use color to separate your graphics and make them pop. So this scene, for example, we have three primary colors. We have white, blue, and green. And one thing you'll notice is that one of the colors is not mixed with any of the other elements. So blue here is on the background only, while green is on the accent graphics and the title, while white is also on the title and the accent graphics in the scene. So there is clear contrast in this, and we're only using three primary colors. Take another look here. We're only using two primary colors here, blue with different variations of that shade, and white to help make everything stand out. And even over here, we're using white for our titles and a pinkish purple sort of look for our background we're using two primary colors in the scene and that helps it stand out dramatically and you see over here we have a very dark gray look for the background and that's not on any of the elements in the scene and then we have you know our pinkish magenta text uh, with our accent graphics and just white accent graphics by itself so so by using no more than three colors in the scene it'll be a lot easier to make your work stand out so when doing projects it's important to know the difference between using a camera or a null object for 3D animation. So in this case, this is a 3D null animation. And in this composition, this is a 3D camera movement animation. And there's a difference between the two and you should know the difference and when to use them. When you use a 3D camera animation, think of it as a way that you'll be able to rotate around the text. So for this composition, one thing to keep in mind that the camera is doing the animation, not the graphics. And as a result, the camera is going to be moving around the title around a very specific point where the camera is focused. So it's important to keep that in mind if you want to do a rotation around a title in a circular motion, that's what you're going to get. With a 3D null object where you have all your graphics parented to a null object and you have that null object animated in 3D space with a, you know, a 3D layer and you do the animations here, what's going to happen is now the title is going to animate in 3D space, not the camera, not the null object. So if you want to control a title or a graphic and keep it in place, go ahead and animate with a null object. If you want to animate around something, use a camera. You can achieve the same results with both of these, but it's just a lot easier when you use them in the correct situation. Anytime you mix graphics with titles or other graphics, you need to make sure that that work stands out very easily. So here's our previous example. We have great color palette here, but we don't have objects blending well together, kind of looks flat and messy but what we can do is effectively use drop shadows where it's subtle it's going to look great so we'll come here to the perspective and we'll grab a drop shadow and all you have to do is increase the softness up to like 25 for the first effect and then you just come here duplicate it by going to edit duplicate and you increase the softness up to like 200 and this will help create some separation here and we also could apply this to other graphics so it applies to the back end of the title and now these graphics are going to stand out among each other just by using a very subtle drop shadow that just looks clean by duplicating it twice. And we're coming close to our end, but instead of using simple text animations with the transform properties that you have here with all your layers, make sure when you're animating text that you use the animate properties instead of using transform. I'm going to show you the difference in animation control. So we come here to animate and we can just add a position or any other property there. We can just bring down the Y value. We come here to add, go to property and just add an opacity to this and we we'll lower the opacity to 0%. Then you just open up range selector, you add a keyframe for start, you move forward in time, set the start up to 100%. And the animations will be completely different and you have a lot more control with the animation properties. And also when you animate with using the animation properties on the title layer, you can easily move your title around without affecting any keyframes. Whereas if you use say the position transform on a title layer, you can't move it around without changing the animation. So you have to select the keyframes and it's just a lot more work involved. All right, so this last technique is all about keyframe animation. So if we recall, you'll see that we have two keyframes here animating on this title and we can select those keyframes and hit F9 to make them easy, these keyframes. And this will control the speed of the animation. So it'll start off a little bit slower and then it'll accelerate and it'll slow down to end the animation. But you can take this even further and create your own custom animations by clicking on the graph editor. And there's two different things that you might want to take a look at. Edit speed graph and value graph. I use either graph for the same exact thing because I always select my keyframes and I drag out these handles on the top there and also on the bottom. And as a result, we're going to have a much different look in animation. And if you drag out your keyframes, 
So you'll see that the animation on the start is very slow and it slows down at the end. And overall, this will help you create a unique style in your motion graphics by having your own style of animation speed. So those are 10 tips that you could be using for every After Effects project. Now, not everyone is, you know, gonna work for every single project. You know, I wanted to talk about some, just some basics to get that out there. Let me know in the comments, you know, what you do on every single project. You know, maybe you don't turn on motion blur. Maybe you like 60 FPS, you know, motion graphics. I would like to know. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we're posting multiple post-production tutorials every single week. You can also hit me up on Instagram. We have tutorials on there as well. And always be creative.